Hi, Julius here. What if I told you that this is actually a powerful color grading controller for DaVinci Resolve? Now, using MidiGrade and a third-party app, depending on your operating system, you're able to control things like color adjustments, qualifiers, HDR wheels, power window, primary bars, and so on, using an Xbox or PlayStation controller. In this video, I will first demonstrate what you can achieve with it. After that, I'll walk you through the setup process and finally show how the functions are laid out. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve 18. I've got MiniGrade running in the background and this Xbox controller is connected to my PC wirelessly. I have two clips here on the timeline that I wish to color grade using references. So let's see how that goes. Starting from here, I'll try and do everything using this gamepad only. We'll be grading this footage shot on an Arri Alexa and try and match that to this still from Jojo Rabbit. Let's begin by scrubbing the timeline and finding a nice frame for us to use as a master frame. And then we'll go ahead and start balancing this shot using contrast. I'll speed it up a bit. Then adjust the middle grays with pivot. Go to highlights and come down with highlights a bit. I'm going to boost up saturation. Now we can see the footage is really warm. So next I'll decrease the temperature and adjust the tint as well. Now as I toggle the node on and off, you can see how far we've come with just a couple of adjustments. This is a great starting point for doing secondaries. Using reference wipe, I'll bring up the reference again. I want to start with the skin tones, so I'll create a new node. Now let's go to qualifiers. I'm going to toggle highlight on and now with the right thumbstick move my cursor to this spot and use the left thumbstick to select the colors of the skin. Now to adjust this selection further I'll just move the hue center around to find a nice balance point and then with width limit my selection. The skin is well saturated so I can increase the saturation low soft and then I'll adjust luminance lows as well. Let's see how this selection holds. There's quite a bit of noise, so let's go to denoise and come way up with it. Hmm, actually, even more. Okay, that looks better. Let's toggle the highlight off. Now that I'm happy with the qualifier, we can bring the reference back. And I'll go to HDR wheels next. Here, I will go to global and decrease the exposure. I'll move the color wheel towards flesh tone. Next, come down with shadow exposure down heaps. It will look a bit strange at this point, but I'm actually only looking at the skin tones at the moment. I'll add a bit of green to the shadows. Come down with its saturation too, as it looks a bit too saturated. And now with the light color wheel, I'll adjust the key side of her face. I want to add a bit of warmth. Increase the light exposure. And again, come down with the saturation a bit. This is close enough for now. So next I'll create an outside node. Looking at the reference still, we can witness a strong lean towards green and science especially in the dark tones. I'm also interested to see how highlights are treated in this, so I'll invert the reference wipe. I can see our current highlights are quite a bit brighter and warmer. So let's go back to HDR grade and find the highlights color wheel. Come down with the exposure. And then I'll do that on light as well. I'm going to add a bit of green to the light wheel and it just highlight a bit as well. That looks pretty good. Now let's invert the reference white back so we can compare. Let's get to the meatiest part of this grade, which is the underlying dark green cyan tone. I'll find the dark color wheel in HDR grade and on the wheel go straight to the opposite direction of red. Next I'll decrease shadow exposure and find that warm green tone with the wheel. 
I'll come down with the saturation. And I actually want to adjust hue a little bit as well. Now this looks nice. We're really close at this point. What I think I want to try next is adjust the HDR dark color wheel a bit further towards cyan. And come really, really down with exposure. Skin tones are still a tiny bit off, so I'll select our second node again. Especially the contrast ratio needs more work. So I'll adjust the light exposure and then come down with shadow exposure. And finally strengthen the shadow flesh tone. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. I'll toggle the reference wipe off. And with playback, I can do my last valuation. Looks pretty good. Let's move on. Now with this next clip, which is also shot on an Alexa, I want to match it to this still from The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Let's again start with a good frame to work on. Just gonna use the playback and around here, this will work. This time for balancing, I'll use primaries color wheels. I'll come down with lift and go up with gain. I'm actually gonna boost them up quite a bit because I'm looking at the skin tones. And then down with gamma. I'll increase the saturation I don't mind going overboard with it at this stage. And back at primary bars, I'll adjust the gamma wheel towards cold. Here's before and after. Okay, now that we have this shot balanced, let's toggle our reference wipe on. And I'll select the next still from the still library. We can really see there's no neutral grace in the reference. So let's begin with that, creating a blue overall tone. I've created a new node. And in qualifier, I'll toggle highlight on. Move the mouse cursor and select the neutral grays on the back wall like this. I'll move the hue center around. And actually, I want this selection to extend to all hues, so I'll just toggle hue off. This is all about the low saturated tones. So I'll come down with saturation high and adjust high soft. Then luminance low soft and low as well. Finally, I'll make the selection clear with clean black. And I'm gonna add denoise. I've got a feeling we lost a bit too much of the dark tones, so let's adjust luminance low. There we go. Now at this stage I want to see the reference again, so I'll toggle the reference wipe back on. And with primary bars I can really precisely dial in the right amount of blue, Decrease red. I'm going to add some green. I'm going to add more blue. And decrease red. And now I'm going to match the saturation by decreasing the amount we have here. By toggling this node off and back on, I'd say we've got a pretty good match. Okay. Now with just these notes, we've already come pretty close look-wise, but the skin tones clearly lack in contrast and the flesh tone is not quite it. Let's work on that. I'll create an outside note. Now let's go to power window. I'll create a circular window. Move the cursor inside the window and move it where we want it. I'll decrease the size of it and I'm going to increase its softness. I'm going to make it even smaller and move it more to the center. Now that we have our window in place, I wish to go back to the primary wheels. I'll decrease the gamma and I'm only looking at the shadow side of her face while doing so. Then up the gain and Using the offset wheel, I will find the right skin tone. It's going a bit colder there. 
The contrast ratio is even higher than this, so let's adjust gain further and come down with gamma luminance. And I'm going to increase gain more. Now with this introduced blue and contrast, we're much closer to our goal. Finally, while balancing, I overshot on purpose with gain and now our highlights are clipped. I want to bring them back without affecting the rest of the image. So I've created a new node and I toggle the reference wipe off so we can see the other lamp in the background. I'm going to go to log wheels and using highlight luminance, I can bring back all those details in highlights to create a natural looking roll off. I feel like introducing a tiny bit of green as well. And I see this has affected the skin tones more than I like. So with high range, I limit the luminance value where log highlights takes effect. To compensate this, I'll come further down with highlight. Here's before and after, before, after. With four nodes, we've replicated to an extent the popular blockbuster look. Let's do a final comparison to the reference. And here's the look development from start to finish. Hopefully now that you've seen what can be done together with a gamepad and MIDI grade, I've really got your interest. Let me show you how to set this up so you can do it yourself. Here's what you'll need. A copy of MIDI grade, either an Xbox or PlayStation controller, and if you're on Mac, an iOS app MIDI troll running on an iPhone or iPad, or if you're on Windows, you'll need Xbox MIDI controller by Ocean Swift. Be mindful, there are many different gamepad models out there, so check with the app of your choice whether your Xbox or PlayStation controller is supported. Windows is more straightforward, so let's do it first. Open both MIDI Grade and Xbox MIDI controller. Import the preset file included in the MIDI Grade download folder. Select MIDI Grade from this output drop down menu. Ensure the controller is connected to your PC and then click this OS button so it turns green. Now we should see it reacting to our controller inputs. Finally, we check that the correct screen resolution and settings are enabled in MIDI grade, and that's it. To make this work on Mac, we need a bit of help from iOS. Open MIDI Troll on your iPhone or iPad. Connect your gamepad to it. Adjust the outputting MIDI notes according to the settings listed in the user manual. Next, connect your iOS device to your Mac. Open audio MIDI setup in Applications Utilities. Grant permission for your iOS device to perform as an instrument by clicking Enable. Now open MIDI Studio to check that an instrument called iPhone or iPad has been successfully created. And finally, make sure you've got MIDI Grade properly set up with the right screen resolution and set of settings selected. Okay, now that we have MIDI Grade set up with a gamepad, I'll teach you the layout. It's not too different to navigating a menu in a video game. This is how it works. You use left and right bumpers to navigate between menus. Color adjustments, color wheels, primary bars, log wheels, HDR grade, qualifiers, and window. Then use the left and right triggers to navigate between different adjustments within those menus. Kind of like how in-game you would select an item from an inventory. And then to adjust it, use the left thumbstick. To make it go faster, press and hold the start key while adjusting. To reset an adjustment, simply click the left thumbstick or use the back button to undo. The right thumbstick focuses on playback. Move it left and right to move the playhead, up and down to jump to the next and previous clips on your timeline. By holding down the start key, this thumbstick becomes your mouse, which is really handy. Right thumbstick to place your cursor where you need it, and left thumbstick to click and drag. Pressing the right thumbstick is normal playback, and reverse playback with the start key. 
The rest of the keys on the controller are dedicated for nodes and other shortcuts. There's toggle node on and off, next node, bypass grade, and previous node. With start button pressed, it's add serial node, append node, add parallel node, and add node before current. Still holding the start key, here's reset node, add outside node, delete node, and toggle loop. And the start button depressed, these arrow keys become menu dependent shortcuts like resets, toggle reference wipe, adding power windows, toggling highlight on and off, and so on. Please see the MIDI grade user manual for a full list of features. So as you see, this is an incredibly versatile, fast and comfortable way of doing color grading in DaVinci Resolve. And the best part is that you likely already own one of these gamepads, so you can jump straight in. Good thing to note is that with a single MIDI grade license, you get other controller options as well. Twister is pricey, but has really awesome build quality and is the original controller MIDI grade was developed for. X-Touch Mini has all the same features as the Twister, but is more affordable and has an extra slider for controlling playback. And you can even use your keyboard to quickly access all of your important color grading adjustments that way. What makes the gamepad unique though, is that you can really kick back, relax, and have fun while grading. All right, that's all for now. If you enjoyed this, make sure to check out the website for more information, and please share this video with your colleagues. MidiGrade has been my passion project since 2016 and has helped countless colorists worldwide, so all support is greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching.